So I want to talk about women and the gift of the spirit. I want to remove that stumbling block on the road. I want to talk about women and the gift of the spirit. So if everything is free, if everything that Jesus did from the cross to the throne, everything he gave is free. So there is an angle people introduce and they say, they say a woman should not preach. They say a woman should not preach. The first issue people say is Jesus had 12 apostles who were men and there was no woman. And in the four gospels, it is established, which is true. That is true. Number two, they say in the book of Acts, there were no apostles that were women. That is also true. Number three, they say in the epistles, where there appear to be two verses that forbids women from teaching and preaching. That's also true. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Women should keep quiet. In 35. First Timothy chapter 2. I can help you with scriptures to help their point. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. Where he's talking about a bishop, he says a bishop must be a husband. A bishop must be the husband of one wife. So if, he, if a woman is not a husband in their argument, she cannot be a bishop. Let's deal with the questions one by one and do exegesis. Are you ready for this? Because we need to free this woman to preach this gospel. Freedom from denominational uh, uh, chains and denominational eh? <laughs> stumbling blocks. <laughs> Let's take the first question. We have no apostle among the twelve that Jesus commissioned in Luke 9 and Matthew 10, 1 to 5. There were no women commissioned. But don't also forget that among the twelve, one was a Judas. That's a good point. One of the men was a Judas. Is that not a good point? But then in Luke's gospel, chapter 8, verse 2, we're going to read. Luke chapter 8, verse number 2. <clears throat> and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Next verse. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Stewart, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. The uniqueness of what this account is, Jesus gives a parable. Then he says, those that are without do not understand. In his parable, just before chapter 8 verse 1. Those that are without do not understand. Then he goes privately to his disciples. Those he will reveal the mysteries of the kingdom to. And these women were numbered with the twelve. That Jesus called privately to reveal to them the mysteries of the kingdom. These women were part of it. And he, he didn't tell everybody what he was saying. He called the twelve. And the women... And many others whom he revealed the secret of the kingdom to. That's the essence of this Luke chapter 8 account. To show you that when Jesus was revealing the secrets of the kingdom. He revealed it to a few. The twelve and these women. Alright. That's number one. In Luke's gospel chapter 10. After he sent out the twelve. Which were called apostles in chapter 9. He sent out the apostles, 12 of them, in chapter 9, verse 1 to 6. The Lord appointed other 70. Other 70. And those 70 had no gender attached to them. Just 70. Okay? In the, at the beginning of this whole mission, he appointed other 70. We have no inkling the gender of this 70, but he sent them two by two. There is no incline here that there is a gender relation. They came back in Luke chapter 10. 
and said the demons were subject to us through your name. Jesus said, I saw the devil fall like lightning. He said, but rejoice not in this that demons obeyed you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. He didn't specify whether they were males, females, females only, or males only, but they were 70. We know of a shorty that apart from the 12, other people in Jesus' ministry were women. Apart from the 12. Other prominent players, key players in the ministry of Jesus were women. There's a probability that in the 70, there were also women. Now in John's gospel, chapter 4, he meets a woman at the well. And the woman had a ministry of being married. A ministry of what? She was married to five husbands. And Jesus related with her. Look at John 4, 18. John chapter 4, verse 18. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that sayest thou truly. Wow. Now Jesus relates with her and then in verse 40, verse 28, verse 28 of John chapter 4, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the man, saith to who? To the man. Next verse. Come, see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Come. She goes preaching Jesus. She goes declaring Jesus without divorcing the five men. Without settling the record. She goes straight into ministry. In the presence of Jesus. And Jesus not interrupting. She preached both to men and to women. The Christ. Now, verse 39. John 4, 39. John 4, 39. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. For the saying of the woman. Eh? They believed on him for the saying of the woman. Which testified, he told me all that I ever did. For the preaching of the woman. Is this ministry? Did she preach Jesus? Did they believe? So we have an account of a woman who like the 12 goes about to preach Jesus. Also in John chapter 20, Jesus is dead. He is buried. Then he rises from the dead. The 12 are scattered. They are confused. All of them are rat raised. Just one woman had the audacity to go to the grave. I miss Raboni. I love Raboni. Let me find out what's happening to him. All have gone, but I've got to stick to him. Even in death, he's got to know that he's got me. She's hanging around the grave. She believes what he told them. He said he will rise on the third day. This is the third day. Let me hang around so that when he rises from the dead, I'll be the first. She's hanging around. She's a woman, not a man. Peter, they were on the race. In fact, Peter has gone back to tell the MD of his company, step down, I'm the new MD now. Because that thing I was pursuing is hopeless. <laughs> but this woman was hanging around because she believed what he told her. Now follow this. Just one woman goes to the tomb. She's the first person, according to record, to have an eyewitness account of the resurrection. The first person with the eyewitness account, which is an apostolic requirement. The first person with an eyewitness account of the resurrection is a woman, which is the foundation of the apostolic ministry. Eyewitness account. A woman with a history of attending deliverance seven demons she is the first who saw Jesus John 20 17 
John chapter 20 verse 70. Jesus saith unto her, touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren. So she became the apostle to the apostles. You go, go. He now sends her, who is an apostle, one cent. You go to my brethren. So a woman was the first apostle of the resurrection. Put it up. You go, put it up. Verse, verse 17, John 20, 17. You go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. So she is the first person to give an eyewitness apostolic account to the apostles. She is the first person to see the resurrected Christ and unlike others, she believed. She takes the account to the apostles. The eyewitness account is the key to apostolic ministry. Eyewitness account is the key to apostolic ministry. And a woman is the first person who did it. John 20, 18. Mm -mm. John chapter 20, verse 18. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that she had spoken these things he had spoken these things unto her so we have a count in the four gospels of women carrying out the ministry let's examine the ministry of the apostle some say can a woman be an apostle can a woman preach some say a woman can do all things but she must never be the founder of a local church she can do all things, but she cannot be mommy G.O. <laughs> Let's look at the ministry of the apostle. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Are you still here? Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Pastors and teachers. Next verse for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ let's look at the ministry of the apostle because the way the bible was translated you will find the word man used for male and female that's the way the bible was translated but if you're a male sensitive person you will read second corinthians 5 17 if any man be in Christ, woman not inclusive. <laughs> if any man, 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 all men are dead in Adam. But you are reading your Bible in gender form because you have a gender problem. So Ephesians 4.11 4.11 <clears throat> If put it up Ephesians 4.11 for the, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists Some pastors and teachers The word he gave In verse 8 Look at verse 8 of Ephesians chapter 4 That word he gave Wherefore he saith When he ascended up on high He led captivity captive And gave gifts unto men he gave gifts unto men men used there is a word in the greek it simply means truly he gave gifts truly the word men in the greek means truly is used 182 times truly the word truly or the word indeed indeed or truly it's used to affirm in Matthew 3, 11, you see the use of that word. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water. Indeed. Truly. That word indeed and gifts unto men is the same word. Indeed. Gifts unto men. Okay. He gave gifts indeed. He gave gifts truly. It's an affirmation of what Jesus has done. It has nothing to do with gender. He gave gifts truly. He gave truly some apostles. 
He gave truly some apostles. Truly. Look at Ephesians 4, 7. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. But unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. The measure. Everyone is everyone. So if everyone has a measure of the gift of Christ and is referring to ministry, that same word, everyone was used by brother Paul. Everyone in Christ. Ephesians 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So everyone in Christ have been given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Thus everyone has gender. When we say everyone, does he have gender? No. If everyone has gender, that means the women are not blessed in Christ. It means the women are not chosen in Christ. But it's everyone blessed us. us. That means they are not in the body of Christ. It means we can remove the women from the body of Christ. Let the body of Christ be masculine body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5. He has quickened us together, raised us up together, made us sit together. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, by grace you are saved through faith, where his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, then you must be that everyone. Meaning all of this refers to both of us, male and female. Everyone is blessed. Everyone is chosen. Everyone has been given the measure of the gift of Christ, male and female, in the body of Christ. Look at 1 Corinthians 12, 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 28. And God has set some in the church. First apostles, second really prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, government, diversities of tongues. But he said, same in the church. What's the church? Verse 27 of 1 Corinthians 12. Lots of scriptures good for your doctrinal persuasion. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. You are. That's the body. He is saying in the body of Christ where we have male and female, God has set forth apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastoring teachers. He says in 1 Corinthians 12, 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. So these instructions, this information, this revelation, no gender is involved. Are you following? He has given gifts in the body. Male, female, covet the best gifts. Male, female, covet the best gifts. Look at Romans chapter 12 verse 4 to 6. Romans 12. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. 5. So we, many, are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another. 6. Having then gifts, differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. So he's saying to us, no distinction. Look at verse 7. He makes no distinction of gender. Romans 12, 7. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching. He's addressing the body, male and female. So Ephesians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Romans chapter 12, verse 4 to 6. He does not discriminate male from female. He uses everyone in Christ. Everyone in the body of Christ. Everyone in Christ. Everyone in the body of Christ. Look at 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse number 10. <clears throat> As every man had received the gift, even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. 11. If any man speak, let him speak the oracles of God. 
if any man minister as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. No gender sensitivity in those verses. Is there a distinction there? No. Man has nothing to do with gender. Man has nothing to do with gender. It's just man, a human being who is in Christ. A human being. So, wherever we have seen the gifts mentioned, which are men. 1 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. All these people scattered. When Peter wrote to them, in verse 23, he says, you are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. All of them, both male and female, they are all born right now. He says to everyone, you have received a gift to minister to one another. Male and female. So, there has been no time or scripture or verse of scripture that speaks about ministry gift outside the ones I finished reading. And none of them makes a distinction at all in male or female. Now, the word some in verse 4, verse in chapter 4, verse 11 of Ephesians, that word some, when I say some, it's not used for quantity in the Greek. Some. Is the word toes, T O U S in the Greek. Some toes. It is used 740 times. None of it is used for quantity. It is used to specify, not to qualify. To specify, not to qualify. Is the word toes used for who, which, them, they? It's not used for to qualify, but to specify. God has given they. God has given them. Simply means he gave the apostles. These apostles, not quantity, but rather to specify as a perfect article. They, they are, them, which. That's the word song. He gave the apostles. He gave the prophets. He gave the evangelists. Is to specify, not to qualify. We have seen no authority either in the Ephesian text, Corinthian text, or Roman text dis distinguishes. First Peter four ten. First Peter chapter four verse ten. As everyone has received the gift, minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of god the words are everyone everyone every one of you does it mean all huh male female okay so that sorts out the epistles it makes no distinction between a male by an apostle or a female being an apostle no distinction Let's look at another text. First Timothy 2, 11. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. Mm -mm. Let the women learn from who? From who? He just says, let the women learn in silence. From who now? With all subjection. There are no definites or specifics. Look at verse 12. Same first Timothy 2. <laughs> but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. This always confuses women, I mean people, because he uses the term woman. Woman. If your Bible is mine, I will underline that word, word woman because that is where the lacuna is. The word woman. In translation, there were some general words used 500 to 800 years ago. 500 to 800 years ago. That could become problematic today. Like the word woman. The word woman is a Greek word Gwen. Gwen. G-U-N-E. Gwen. Is 
spelled as G U N E is pronounced as G Y N E Gwen. Interestingly, that woman is used for either wife, woman, or lady. Wife, woman, or lady. Every time you see it, it could either mean woman, lady, wife. How many of you know the difference between a woman and a wife? Huh? Do we know the difference? Woman and wife. Huh? Huh? Is every woman a wife? Is, is every wife a woman? <laughs> Don't make me laugh now. We have Gwen used for woman and wife. Matthew 1, 20 to 21. Let's see the use of that word, Gwen. Matthew 1, 20 to 21. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Mary thy wife is used for Mary Gwen. Look at verse 24. Used for wife. Same Matthew 124. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. Even though they are not done marriage ceremony, the Bible records her as his wife. That's interesting, right? So, we have wife. But for you to have wife, you must have what? Eh? For you to have wife, will you have man or husband? Eh? Husband. So anywhere there's wife, there is what? Husband. So there must be a husband to have a wife. Now, look at Matthew 5.28. Matthew 5.28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart. Can a husband look at his wife to lust after her? Huh? So is he talking about a husband here? He's talking about what? A man who is not the woman's husband. Looking at her to lust after her. Alright? Now, is it, is it is it possible that a husband could lust after his wife? Huh? No. That thing <laughs> that will make the husband lust after his wife is not lost. Is supernatural blessing. <laughs> Who gave that revelation? You need to do a seminar on that. <laughs> There's unction in that corner this evening. Is that interpretation of talks? <laughs> Glory to God. So he used the word Gwen. Same word, woman. Look at another, the word female. It's a Greek word, feli. P-H-E-L-Y. Use thrice. Matthew 19, 4. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 19, verse number 4. Are you still here? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them what? Male and female. There is first a male and female before a husband and wife. Hello? There is first a male and female before what? So he specified it. There is male and female gender. And then husband and wife in the marital relationship. Mark 10, 6 says the same thing. Now, Galatians 3.28 we're going to read like a mass choir, everybody. Galatians 3, 28. Can we all read one to go? There is... I want you to read, let our TV, radio, and uh, social media audience hear your voices. One to go. There is neither male, for you are all... No male, no female, no husband, no, no... No man, no woman, <laughs> no Jew, no Greek, no Ibibio, no Anang. You're all one. 
in Christ. Say, I hear you. So in Christ, there is no male or female gender. Christ is not gender sensitive. Husband and wife are earthly relationships. You don't have to be born again to have a wife. And you don't have to be born again to have a husband. It's an earthly relationship that ends on earth. So in Christ, no male, no female. Because in Christ, it's eternal relationship. No male, no female. First Corinthians 7.32. Mm -hmm. 7.32. First Corinthians. But I will have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried. Care it for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Next verse. But he that is married, care it for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Paul makes a distinction between the married and the unmarried. Listen carefully. This is the difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried cares for the things of the Lord. No instruction. She doesn't have any instruction towards any man. The unmarried lady has no instruction whatsoever towards any man. But they that are married care for how to please their husbands. So whenever we are referring to instructions to a wife, it will relate to her husband. So if we are referring to instructions to a woman and man concerning instruction to subjection, what are, who are we talking to? A wife, not a woman. Because a woman is not a wife, but a wife is a woman. So every instruction to women in the epistles are instructions to wives. All. All instructions to women in the epistles are instructions to wives. Especially subjection. Look at that 1 Corinthians 7, 32 to 33. 1 Corinthians 7, 32 to 33. But I will have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried, careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Next verse. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. So since the word gain has to do with whether a woman is married or not, wife, lady, woman, we have to look at it in context to see whether he is talking to a wife or a woman in general. Because it's only the married that cares for the affairs of the husband. The unmarried has no such instruction or responsibilities. Now, 1 Timothy 2.10. That is what took us through that journey. 1 Timothy 2.10. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Which woman? Subjection to who? Exactly. 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 11. Let the woman learn in silence without subjection. At this point, he's talking to the, to the wife. You need some witness to establish this. Every time Brother Paul teaches women to submit, he's always talking about submit to husband. All the Pauline theology. Not to submit to every man. Look at 1 Corinthians 11.3. 1 Corinthians 11.3 But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. The head of the woman, every woman or wife eh? wife verse 4, 1 Corinthians 11.4 Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Who is the head of the man? Christ. Next verse. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. Who is the head of the woman? Her husband. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. So he's referring to husband and wife. Look at verse 7 of the same chapter. 11 verse 7. 
For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. Husband and wife. Not every woman in the church. That's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 2 to 3, it says, let every man have his own wife to avoid fornication. He now establishes husband and wives. In 1 Corinthians 11, he talks about submission and authority, which has to do with the husband and wife. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. Glory to God. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience as also said to the law. Obedience to who? Husband. Are all the women in the church married? No. So there's a law he's talking about here and it's not the law of Moses but we deal with it in the course of this teaching. Look at verse 35. First Corinthians 14, 35. Is it getting clear? And if they will learn anything eh? Eh? If they will learn anything let them ask who? Where? For it is a shame for women to speak where? So what is brother Paul reinforcing? Eh? Submission to who? Exactly. He's not stopping ministry. Very clear. Ask your husband as home. Well. Instruction to wives. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 and 24 you can read at home. Paul makes a distinction. Look at verse 24. Ephesians 5 24. I like 24. 5 24. Ephesians. Therefore as the church is subject unto Christ. So let the wives. To their own husband. In everything. So the instruction of submission. And subjection is to your own husband. Not to every man. 1 Peter 3 1. Peter teaches the same thing. 1 Peter 3 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Same thing. So everywhere you read to be in subjection is referring to wives and husbands. Wives to be in subjection is instruction for the marital institution, not for ministry. Instruction for the marital institution, not for ministry. So in 1 Timothy 2, verse 11. He is giving instruction to wives. First Timothy 2 11, put it up. Let the woman learn in silence without subjection. Subjection to the husbands. Next verse. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to use up authority over her husband, but to be in silence. 14. For Adam was first formed. Go back to that 13. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Next verse. Authority. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Okay. Next verse. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. If they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. That's not for an unmarried woman. So these instructions are for them as to their conduct in their family. Now, there are silence in the churches because we are about to see in the same first Corinthian, Paul mentioned that women are to prophesy in the church. Women are to prophesy in the church. Whatever he said in first Corinthians 14 was not, do not say anything in the church. That instruction is between husband and wife. If your husband are talking about something, and your husband is insisting, keep quiet and learn. In 1 Corinthians 11.5, Paul gives credence to the fact that a woman does prophesy. 1 Corinthians 11.5. Put it up. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth, eh? Woman does what? Prophesieth. 
prophecy means that a woman speaks by the spirit to preach and teach. Is that right? Huh? So, Joel's prophecy, Acts 2.17, let's read like a mass choir as I begin to round up for the night. Are you, are you in the house? Acts 2.17, let's go, one, two, go. I want the radio to hear you on the TV and the, and the social media. One, two, go. I will pour out of my spirit upon what? And your sons and daughters shall do what? Your sons and daughters shall do what? On the day of Pentecost, were there women in that place? Acts 1 14. There were about 120 and women were there. Sons and daughters. So women can prophesy. That is, women can give things by the Spirit. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. All power is given to me. Teaching. Make disciples of all nations. If women don't teach, if women don't preach, then they are not called to disciple the nations. He gave instructions to everybody. Mark 16, 15. Go into all the world, men and women, and preach the gospel to every creature. Men and women. So the guys that speak in tongues, cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, and they recover. Women inclusive. Women speak in tongues. Women lay hands on the sick, and they recover. Women expel demons. It's not just men. My spirit is upon sons and daughters. So if women speak in tongues, they can lay hands on the sick. And if they lay hands on the sick, they cast out demons. Signs and wonders follow men and women. It shall follow them that believe. It shall follow what? Them that believe. Women inclusive. In Acts chapter 8 verse 1. Acts chapter 8 verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. Except the apostles. Next verse. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial. And made great lamentation over him. Next verse. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and healing men and women. Committed them to prison. So men and women were persecuted for the gospel. Men and women were persecuted for the gospel. No distinction. Acts 21 verse 9. We're building our case intelligently, right? 21 verse 9. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. How many ladies prophesying at once? Four. Here is Paul in the house of his ministry friend, Philip, the evangelist. He had seven young ladies who were not married. And they were speaking by the spirit. That is, they engaged Paul. As Paul was sitting down, they came to him. The Lord will have me say this to you. And first, the first one will speak to Paul by the Spirit. While she is landing, the second one will say, She too will open another revelation. While she's landing, the third one will say, Zazozo. And Paul was sitting down and taking notes by the Spirit. And they were ladies ministering to Apostle Paul. They minister to Paul the things of the spirit. Teaching good. Yeah. How would you like to visit a house and instead of the wife of the man that you visited bringing you a bottle of Coca-Cola, she walks out to the sitting room. Men For the Lord will have me say this to you. And she ministers to you the things of the spirit. Ministers to you the things in the spirit. Ministers to your heart. Joy breaks forth. You leave the place with solutions. Instead of Coca-Cola. That's not to say you shouldn't give us Coca-Cola. When we come in fact bring Coke, Fanta, Sprite, team. Bring Mirinda. You know Mirinda? I used to like it when it's cold in those days. 
So those ladies ministered to Paul by the spirit. You know, they were not discussing designer shirts or suits. They were speaking by the spirit. They were talking and giving Paul revelation on his ministry. They were speaking by the Holy Ghost. Prophecy is to teach and preach by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And you have revelation. You have edification. And they were doing just that. Now, Paul says, prophecy edifies. It builds up. Every time you prophesy to somebody, you are building him up. Paul said, women should not speak. But Paul was there and seven ladies were ministering to him. A guy on no more and he was writing. So which means when he said women should not speak, he wasn't talking about women in general. He was establishing submission in the marriage institution. Are we teaching good here? So we have no record that women were not allowed either by doctrine or or by practice to preach or teach. There's no such scripture. In 1 Timothy 3, 2, where it says, a bishop must be the husband of one wife. <laughs> a bishop simply means one who has oversight over the church. Once you are overseeing a local church, you are a bishop. Even if it's a branch. Even if it's a branch. Once human beings sit down, even a house church. If you are pastoring a house church, you can call yourself bishop. But not under this church, except I give you permission. <laughs> because we have no such identifications. But you can call yourself a bishop over a house church. Because once you oversee people in spiritual things, in word and doctrine, you are a bishop over them. You don't need a collar and a choir uniform. You don't need any of those. It's not a title, it's work. Is responsibility. Am I teaching good? It's not a dress. It's work. <laughs> he that desires the office of a bishop desires a good work, not a good, not a good gown, not a good cap, a good work. <laughs> teaching good? Is yes, work. Look at that verse three. First Timothy three three. <laughs> ah. Ah. A bishop must not be given to wine, nor striker, nor greedy or filthy like you, but patient, not brawler, not covetous, husband of one wife. Now listen, he is saying that the bishop must, he's not saying that the bishop must be a man. The instruction is given here and not to be taken without proper construction. Because if the bishop has to be a husband, then Jesus is disqualified. If the bishop has to be a husband, then Paul is disqualified. If a bishop has to be a husband, then Barnabas is disqualified. Because Paul never married Jesus, never married Barnabas, never married. So that's not what he's saying. So one of the qualities of being a pastor is not to be a husband. But he's saying if you're a pastor and already a husband, you must stay with one wife. Why did he say that? Because Jewish people had embraced by practice polygamy. It was big among Jewish people. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, we have even a man that collected his father's wife. Not his mother, but one of his father's wives. So he's saying the bishop, for example, must be the husband of one wife. He is not saying a bishop must be a husband. The issue was the kind of report he must have. The kind of report, not his gender. The kind of report. He's talking about his testimony. So did we have women in the early church who were in charge of a local church? Let me quickly run through this in another two, three minutes. Yes, there was Priscilla. Priscilla was a woman. Priscilla. Acts 18, 2 and 3, we see her and her husband, Priscilla and Aquila. In verse 24, they take a young man by the name Apollos and taught him the way of God. Paul mentions Priscilla in Romans 16 verse 4. Romans chapter 16 verse 4. Romans 6. Who have for my life laid down their own necks unto whom not only I give thanks but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Next verse. Likewise, greet the church. Go back to verse 3. Verse 3. 16 verse 3. Greet Priscilla and Aquila. 
my helpers in Christ Jesus. They were fellow apostles with Paul. Next verse. Who have for my life laid down their own necks. Unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches. That is, Priscilla and Aquila had a well-known ministry. She was not mentioned because she was pastor's wife. She was mentioned because she had a notable ministry. In fact, in the early Greek material, it was Priscilla before Aquila. It was the wife before the husband. The churches there knew them. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 16, 19, Brother Paul is still acknowledging their ministry. 1 Corinthians 16, 19. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in the house. So Aquila and Priscilla were general overseers of a church. They were bishops. Amen. She is known amongst the apostles. She is known with the apostles. She is numbered with the apostles. Means she has a prominent ministry among the apostles. Or with the apostles. Why is it so? Because the gifts of the spirit are in Christ. And the gifts of the spirit are freely given. If women were restricted in ministry. Then 1 Corinthians 12, 7 will be a lie. If women were restricted in ministry, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 will be a lie. Because he says, the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man. Every. In verse 11, men or women, male or female. So Paul is saying, see yourself in Christ. Because you are in Christ Jesus. And in Christ Jesus, no male, no female. Well, we have few women involved in ministry before Jesus came because there were only two prophets that were women in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Miriam, Moses' sister, a prophetess, and Anna in Luke. They were the only two women that occupied prophetic offices, which was the highest office. Why was it so? Well, <laughs> The issue is not that God restricted them. It's just that they were not available. Because marriage, marriage occupies a woman and makes her ineffective where ministry is concerned. It's not restriction, it's just unavailability. So there's no restriction of doctrine. And you know sometimes a consistent practice which is not correct can be a way of life. Women get used to seeing men doing everything so they relax. They say, my place is in the kitchen. Cooking jollof rice and uh, agidi. With moi moi. <laughs> That's the practice. But time has come. You've got to break that practice. And sisters have to line up and be in the forefront and begin to fulfill the ministry. I didn't hear a good amen. I didn't hear a good amen. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters. Where are the daughters in this building? This night, the women in this church are supposed to be shouting more than anybody. Well, get on your feet. Let's give Jesus the greatest shout. Glory! 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 Every woman say, I prophesy. I preach the gospel. I operate in the spirituals. I operate supernaturally. I'm born of God. All the gifts of God are freely given to me. I didn't hear a good amen. amen. Father, we pray for everyone under the sound of my voice in this building, on television, on radio, all over the world, that these truths resonate in our hearts. Barriers terminated. Obstacles broken. Your people released to function in their full realities in Christ. I give you praise, glory, and honor for answered prayer in Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen like thunder. Amen. Can we have some joy in this house tonight? Glory, glory, glory. I am a mama, Maya. Amen.